everybody, I'm back with another vlog today. Now, unlike my vlogs previously, this vlog is going to be very much a talking vlog. I don't really like to do these that much because I feel kind of weird just sitting in my room talking to a camera for a long period of time and not, not really having any other outside narrative for my video other than just what I'm talking about. So I really want to only do these when I feel like I have some important commentary to say, either about something going on in the world or something specific to this channel. So that being said, the video that I wanted to do today is really talking about how I got interested in vlogging, why I do these, what I want these vlogs to mean, and then how I put them together, like what my process is for making these types of videos. So all in all, vlogging is kind of a weird thing. It's you showing a piece of your life, putting it online, but you're doing it in this way that you're talking to a camera for a good part of the video, you're not really talking to another human being, and you're just trying to show what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. So I had first gotten interested in vlogging when I was really interested in video in high school, pushing towards my senior year. My earliest influence for vlogging was definitely Watch Us Live In stuff with Kalel and Anthony um, before they split up. Now, I was a really big fan of Smosh when I was a lot younger, as I know most other people were, since Smosh was so huge. I enjoyed Anthony, I enjoyed Kalel, I enjoyed their dynamic together, and just, it, it was weird that people that I don't know, I would find it interesting to see them just out in their day-to-day -day life, interacting with each other and with their friends. So I thought it would be fun to do a vlog in high school, not necessarily because I was gonna get a lot of people to watch it. I know that most vlogs on the internet just kind of fade into obscurity, and I figured mine was going to be something like that, but I really wanted it to be a way for me to put myself out there, make some more videos, and make some memories that my friends and I could enjoy years and years from now. But there were a lot of limitations of my high school vlog. One of the biggest ones was my comfort level in actually shooting the vlog. Um, a lot of the things I did back then were kind of on my own. They really weren't that interesting. Things I did do with other people were in a very much controlled environment. There wasn't too much spontaneity to what it was I was filming. Um, I mean, of course, there are a few exceptions, but those were with very close friends. It was hard for me to get out there and do videos with a bunch of people that maybe weren't as accepting of the vlog as my core group of friends. Now, of course, the other factor that was a huge issue at the time was that I was applying to college. And I kind of had it worked into my head by some sources that will remain nameless that if I put a vlog out on the internet, colleges are going to see it and it might affect their decision to admit me to their college or university. After I was working on the high school vlog, I did get accepted to the University of Alabama at Birmingham, UAB. And so when I came to UAB, I figured probably going to a new environment where I really didn't have that many friends, vlogging probably wasn't really a great way to make connections. Putting a camera in people's faces seemed really awkward. So I just took a hiatus from the vlog. I posted some concert footage over time, but there really wasn't much else going on. And so instead, I took a lot of time in my college career thus far to pursue a lot of other video projects with a little bit more serious context, some other employment opportunities, uh, things from my honors program, stuff like that. At that point, video, it, it was it was a job. It was more than one job to me. I was doing video projects for outside sources that had different visions for how they wanted things presented. So while I did have some creative freedom, it was very much a job at that point. So this past summer, like I was in high school, I got really interested in watching YouTube videos again. And I got really interested in particularly Casey Neistat's videos, his style of vlogging. And after getting into a lot of these videos this summer, I realized that I really wanted an opportunity to make videos for me again, to be able to explore creative outlets that I wanted to do to build myself as a filmmaker that weren't tied to any sort of employment. <music> So fast forward to present day, here we are, I'm making vlogs again. The problem is, while handling college, extracurriculars, research, and applying to medical schools, I don't really have time for that Casey Neistat style or other vlogger style of producing a daily vlog. Now, in addition to not having the time to just edit these vlogs in general, it's also hard to sustain it with content. 
There's some days that I, like, really don't leave this room other than maybe to get food with friends or something. That might be I'm studying for a huge exam that's coming up. I'm working on uh, secondary applications for medical school. I'm recording audio or editing video for some other project I'm doing. And it's days like that that not only do I not have the time to do it, there's no interesting story for me to share. There's nothing I feel like is worth capturing on video and editing to put together in some sort of project. I mean, I really have two primary goals. One, I want something that my friends and I can look back on, on the opportunities and fun that we had in college. I think having these video representations of some of the highlights of our senior year is going to be something that's really fun for us to look back on. And then two, I want to work on my abilities in working with video to construct a narrative that is entertaining for others outside of my immediate sphere of influence. Because like I said earlier, I can watch Watch Us Live and stuff. I can watch Casey Neistat. I don't know those people, but they are creating interesting narratives that are fun to follow along with that I enjoy watching, even though I'm not a part of their specific lives. That's the really important part of making a vlog, is constructing an easy-to-follow narrative. Every good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. One of the big challenges with a vlog is you are recording real life. You're recording things as they present themselves to you. So a lot of times it's really hard to keep that and keep everything that you want to keep in a video. You can look at examples of vlogs I've released in the past and see vlogs where I've had a stronger narrative versus vlogs where I've had a much shakier narrative. So like, for example, in the college vlog, if you look at a blast from the past, there is a narrative there. I leave Birmingham to go to Huntsville. While I'm in Huntsville, the middle part, I'm running errands and I meet up with my friends Charles and Josh. And then the end is I, I do leave Huntsville to come back to Birmingham. There is a beginning, a middle, and an end. The problem is it's it wasn't really a strong narrative. I had a vision for how I thought the video was going to take place, and when I actually got to Huntsville, things didn't present themselves in the order I thought they would, and we ended up changing some plans around, which made it harder for me to record and made for an overall shorter video and shakier narrative than I intended. Now, if you look at one of my videos like uh, the Six Flags video for the last weekend of the Georgia Cyclone, or if you look at Moving Three Doors Down, they're both very different. One of them, I'm out doing stuff with friends. The other, I'm literally just in my room all day. But both of them have very strong narratives. For Six Flags, we go to Six Flags, we ride the roller coaster we were there to ride, we do a bunch of other stuff, lots of great opportunities for B-roll film, establishing shots, and then we have a post-vlog wrap-up in the car on the ride home, overall strong narrative. For the Moving Three Doors Down vlog, I literally start out in one room, I move all my stuff to another room, and then at the end, I am in the other room which that whole process isn't nearly as interesting as going to Six Flags and riding these roller coasters, but by constructing an easy-to-follow narrative, I think it created a video that was still very much worth watching. So then, honestly, for how I shoot my vlogs, for the most part, I try to follow um, kind of the Casey Neistat template, if you will. So overall, uh, one of the things that Casey Neistat describes is strong about his vlogs is that he has three types of shot in every episode one handheld shots two locked off shots and three establishing shots those handheld shots the first types of shots are the shakier ones where you're just kind of holding the camera and you're vlogging and you're talking to the audience about whatever that gives your vlog that sense of spontaneity. You have the freedom to film quickly when you're on the run, when things are happening in real time. However, when you have that shaky cam footage, that's something that people don't want to watch for the whole video. It's something that can kind of give you a headache or, or jar the perspective on the video over time. So to establish stability, you have locked off shots, like the shot that I'm doing for this video right now. The camera is locked down on a tripod. There's no shaky surroundings in the video. It just gives me an opportunity to have a stable shot to talk to you, the viewer. 
And then finally, the establishing shots are a really important way to establish your sense of place in the video. Now, some of my establishing shots thus far have been verging on repetitive because a lot of the videos I've done have been here at UAB, so my establishing shots have always been outside of the dorm or in the immediate vicinity. And that's something that's going to really be challenging me in the future with these vlogs is how to find creative establishing shots to give you, the viewer, a sense of where I am in my day and where the vlog is going. It's also important that, like, if I were doing a clip here talking about things and then all of a sudden flash forward and I'm in my research lab talking about things, there needs to be some sort of establishing shot to show the viewer how I got from point A to point B. And that's really important to keep continuity within the narrative as the video is going on. And, of course, to shoot my vlogs, I really don't have that much fancy tech. Uh, most of the shots that you see, including the time-lapse shots and locked-off shots like this, are just going to be with my iPhone 5. Um, I have used my GoPro a little bit, but overall I primarily use my iPhone with a Gorilla tripod. So the biggest thing that I need to find with these vlogs that I'm still really working on and I'm searching for is how to establish my own creative style of vlogging. As I said previously, I'm using the Casey Neistat template as a starting point for me to work with these vlogs, but that is a very broad template. I'm not trying to straight up copy Casey Neistat, though a lot of the things I'm using in my skills for these videos are skills that he describes in his video. And a lot of that is just common sense. If you have a really successful filmmaker that's telling you how to do different things to make your films better, of, of course you're going to try to use them. But finding my own unique style, how to put my own unique twists on these vlogs, I think I've been working to do that, but it's something that I still want to continuously work and develop my own style of vlog making. So with this video to kind of close everything up, the last thing I wanted to address is kind of that broad question that I think people would think a lot when I'm advertising my vlog or people are telling other people about my vlog. And the big question is, why should other people care? Why should other people tune in and watch these videos? And why should people care about pieces of my life? The most basic answer to that question that I can think of is, you know, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe it's not necessarily about caring about what's going on in my life, Whatever you would want to get out of my vlog, that's that's up to you. That's up to what you're looking for. That's up to what you connect with. And if you don't connect with anything, then I mean, by all means, stop watching. You don't want to waste your time watching media that you don't have any sort of connection with. But what I do hope is I hope that I am able to inspire something in others that content creators have inspired in me. So a lot of other content creators, because I'm a video person, have inspired me to want to make more videos and have inspired certain things about my style. Even if you're not a filmmaker, I hope that when people view my vlogs, it encourages them to do something to make their lives more entertaining or make their lives better. For me, just doing this vlog pushes me to say yes to opportunities that I wouldn't normally say yes to. For example, all in all, I'm really not a big fan of football. I'm more of a basketball and hockey kind of person, and baseball. But going to the return of UAB football, I'm, I was really happy to film the event, but it was also an exciting event to be there with my friends and witness something that was really important to my university. So just doing this vlog pushes me more to get out there, and that's, that's something that I'm getting out of it. I just hope that anybody that watches my vlogs does get something out of it and it inspires something in them, like I said before, to push the bounds of their own life and work to make whatever aspect of their life better, no matter how small or big. All right, well, I think I rambled on enough for this video. All in all, like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't really see too much reason why people would watch these kind of videos where I'm just talking to the camera for periods of time. If you are watching this video and you do enjoy the commentary in any sense, please leave me a comment down in that comment section down below and just let me know if you want to see more videos like this. 
this type of video is a lot easier for me to film. I can film them more frequently where I'm just talking about things, but it also doesn't push me very much creatively. I'm not getting out there and experiencing new types of shots. If it's something that any of y'all enjoy watching in any sense, or you get anything out of these sorts of videos, please let me know and I'll try to make more. All in all, I think this vlog is over. Thanks so much for watching.